here we are. I'm very excited, very excited to do this. Um, Melvin, uh, how are you? I'm okay, thank you, Jason. Would you like to, to start by introducing yourself? Uh, I could introduce myself to the audience and we can uh, get started with some questions. Uh, yes, um, uh, well, hello every, everyone. Uh, my name is Melvin Medina. I am uh, the the plant production and protection officer for the sub-regional office of uh, FAO for the Caribbean region here uh, based in Barbados. Thank you. Fantastic. And hi everyone, my name is Jason. I'm a Jamaican born, a New York City raised um, plant scientist uh, that specializes in uh, controlled environmental agriculture, so greenhouse production, and um, you know, indoor farming, shipping containers, that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm very excited to have this conversation because it's been a dream of mine for many years um, to talk about protected, protected agriculture and controlled environmental agriculture with an expert uh, such as Melvin. So um, I hope everyone's ready and uh, we'll jump right in. So Melvin, uh, let's start with uh, your role at the FAO and your current position and kind of what led you to that. Uh, yes, well, I am an agronomist and I have been working in the, for FAO for seven years. But in the past, I, I was uh, working in implementing projects in Central America, the Caribbean, Africa, and Southeast Asia before joining FAO, where I, I was um, um, as an agronomist uh, first, uh, providing technical assistance to farmers and then um, as a trainer of uh, agronomists that uh, they were part of the projects. And uh, well, since I am here, I, I, I was in, in Rome in the health, FAO headquarters for five years and uh, no, six years. And I just uh, joined the sub-regional office uh, here in the Caribbean around three months ago. And uh, what I wanted to, to 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 be back in the field and be closer where the farmers are and and try to uh, assist as much as possible more at the field uh, level. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Melvin. I understand you have a presentation for us today. Yes. Yes, I prepared the presentation. That I just let me know when. Uh, uh, well, the topic is is on uh, protected cultivation systems in the Caribbean, and uh, let me know when would you like me to start. Yeah, let's get started. Let's jump right in. All right, so let me share my screen. Please let me know if you can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, can see it? Yep. Okay, well, uh, thank you. This is a uh, um, protected cultivation systems in the Caribbean. Um, I will go through the, 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 what has been done in terms of the adaptation, the main challenges in the region and um, some opportunities for the sector. Uh, first, I would like to, to begin with uh, why, why farmers are looking for different technological solutions. Uh, in this case, protected cultivation systems. Well, it's because um, uh, farmers are struggling to to get uh, high yields uh, and and good performance, crop performance, because of the increased uh, pests and disease. We have more pests and more diseases affecting negatively our crops. And um, the extreme climate events, um, tropical storms, uh, excessive rains or long periods of uh, drought are affecting also the production systems and limited uh, natural resources to, to be efficient in, in the use of uh, land and, and water, especially in the, in the Caribbean uh, region. Um, protected cultivation systems give us a few advantages. First, the possibility to grow crops uh, year round an increase in productivity, we can increase up to 250% uh, comparing to open field uh, production systems. And the efficiency and the use of uh, soil and the, the use of uh, water, nutrients, 
and also sunlight, which is very important for, for crop uh, performance. Pre this also gives us opportunity to protect uh, high value crops, in this case, mainly vegetables from pests uh, and diseases. These uh, also give us opportunity to reduce the use of pesticides and increase the uh, food safety, especially when it comes to pesticide residues. And um, a little bit of background, uh, I, uh, I was part of this project. We built the first 10 greenhouses in Jamaica. Jamaica is in, uh, today one of the most advanced uh, countries in terms of uh, protected cultivation systems. We build them in the different uh, locations in the country. The standard size was 6,000 square feet. And um, uh, we, 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 we obtained some uh, data last year uh, through the Jamaican Greenhouse Growers Association. And right now there are more than 350 units. As you can see, it has been uh, growing the sector exponentially. But also we have some challenges for, for the protected cultivation system. So first is the access to, to, to the land and water to have uh, large areas under greenhouses or net houses. The, the high prices of uh, agricultural inputs, especially fertilizers, the high cost of energy and labor. Um, the environmental uh, conditions are difficult especially in the lowlands where the water is for the water access for ir irrigation high temperatures and high humidity all year round the um, there has been the, the use of uh, inappropriate structures because of uh, there is there has been a lack of adaptation bringing designs as you can see the one at the photo at the bottom that is a tunnel type that it has been uh, that it was built uh, years, years ago. And, and it's, you, can, you will find it every, almost in every country, in every island. And that is not something that is, is ad adapted to, to, to the Caribbean condition. That is more for, to, to keep the heat in the cold countries. Pests and diseases is a, is a big problem as well. The, the, the high risk of uh, extreme climatic events tropical storm and especially hurricanes because you know the Caribbean region is in the hurricane belt. The lack of uh, research and technologies targeting small scale farmers. This is something that uh, the governments have been not um, investing enough on, on research to address the challenges and low, low capacities of extension services in this area of, uh, of uh, in, the, in, the, in this sector. There are also marketing constraints, uh, especially because the, the the small small scale farmers working individually are not able to supply the markets constantly, and this is because of small areas. Okay, uh, a very good uh, ex 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 example is what uh, the Jamaica has been achieving uh, with this uh, greenhouse uh, growers association, in which they are providing constantly uh, the products to, to the market, but working together. There are all, also other, other constraints and um, one, one another one important is the crop diversification. We see that uh, we see a lot of greenhouses in some in some areas, but uh, everybody is growing the same crops and I think that can be uh, can be uh, improved, improved because crop diversification is 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 also good for the management of pests and diseases, and and give us more opportunities to to avoid the flood in the markets and bring and getting the prices going down. The value chain actors in the sector are input suppliers, important producers, the farmers, of course, post harvest uh, facilities, uh, processors where the grading and the packaging take place, the distributors, marketers, and the final consumers. The adaptation that has been done in, 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 in the Caribbean is, is that first moving from wooden greenhouses to metal structures that will that, that is important to address 
uh, the extreme climatic events and the duration of the of the investment. For that, a pipe a pipe bending machine was first engineered and built locally. And the now we see greenhouses like the one that you see in the photo at the bottom, higher and with sanitary openings for ventilation. Also, the introduction of anti-thermic plastic films, shade nets, anti-isac nets with a bigger holes to improve air circulation. Adapted varieties, heat resistant varieties is what we are looking for. Low cost uh, fertigation systems and fertilizer programs, applications based on water and soil analysis. Also, recently the use of sensors to monitor and apply precisely water and nutrients. Also, the, the, the introduction of renewable energy uh, sources for uh, mainly for irrigation purposes, water harvesting, storage, climate monitoring systems, the use of uh, locking systems to install and to remove the covering materials uh, easily, faster in case of uh, hurricanes, and the in the use of uh, local byproducts, the, for, we have examples of from sugar canes, the use of, the use of molasses to improve a, a structure a, in the soil, and also the use of um, coconut fiber as a substrate. It is important to, to understand that not all the crops can be cultivated everywhere. Okay, this is this is something that we need to understand. This is this is under development, but it's just to show you that we should uh, define which are the crops that should be cultivated uh, based on the elevation, because in in different elevations we will have different microclimates in the tropics. The higher, the cooler, and and not everywhere you will have a, a greenhouse. For the lowlands at sea level will be will be uh, more difficult. The investment should be higher because the, to bring down the temperatures will cost, will cost a lot. And, and um, uh, here you, you, you can see different photos moving from, from um, wooden greenhouses to a more, uh, uh, for, to a better structures using uh, metal frames increasing the height of the greenhouses having ventilations on the roof those are part that, that is part of the adaptation that we have seen different production systems and crops um so the we 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 still see uh greenhouses growing in the soil which is good and um, if the soil is uh, healthy it's, 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 it's advisable to continue growing in the soil but also uh, substrate based uh, using coconut fiber Hydroponic systems, aquaponic systems, mainly the, the the crops that we see are leafy crops because they they have a short crop cycle and you can have up to nine crop cycle per year per year. Peppers, tomatoes, cucurbits, uh, that is uh, that give us a continuous uh, production harvest for for at least four months. Uh, these are some numbers that I, I obtained from the Greenhouse Growers Association again. Uh, the president shared them with me uh, and uh, you can see this is a 3,000 square feet based on these numbers, based on the yield prices, the incomes that can, can be obtained and the cost of the greenhouse, the total cost of the investment. The, the investment can be, can be paid um, uh, after two crop cycles. This is one example for sweet pepper. Uh, of course, the, if, we, if we increase the yield and maintain the price or even improve the, increase the price, the, the investment can be paid in a shorter period of time. Also, the capacity building has been important. Um, the, the establishment of uh, demonstration uh, units, training, Training uh, farmers, training uh, extension officers has been important. Field days, uh, study tours, and we, as FAO, now we are working on on publishing fact sheets, thirteen different fact sheets for in this area of work for for uh, dissemination in among the countries. Okay, so uh, what uh, intervention should be done 
uh, there is a lot of a lot of things to be done still. Um, I think the the development of a na national and regional minimum technical standard it's it's important, including the disaster mitigation strategies. And this this is important because uh, we don't want to see more uh, mistakes coming in the future. Governments are in, are interested in this area of work, but there must be minimum standards that are that are that address the adaptation that the structures needs needs to have and um, also the the uh, regional programs should be promoted in collaboration with private sector and partners partner uh, regional partners like cardi ika fao should be working together involving also youth and new technologies and continue the capacity building governments uh, should be supporting especially research research in in this uh, you know we are we are thinking that this technology may work this may not work but but we don't have facilities that are, that are really are really working to 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 do research and and solve the main uh, issues water access is important infrastructures need to be improved in renewable renewable energy systems uh, and access to finance is important uh, promote um, uh, locally made uh, inputs. We, 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 we. Uh, I mentioned to you the, the example of molasses to improve, the, to increase the orga organic matter in the soil and improve uh, structures. Coconut fiber as a substrate can be can be produced locally. This is just two examples, and also uh, improve post harvest uh, practices facilities. In, in certification and traceability systems to address the full safety and market um, market uh, promotion and, and the protection. S conclusions: private and public sector partnership is is important for the for the for the adoption of the protected agriculture and and, and the CARICOM region. And um, you know, farmers for the uh, an average farmer having a greenhouse. Uh, is is uh, making profits, but uh, still, we need to improve the uh, yield productivity. We need to reduce the operation cost and increase market opportunities to find to 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 push uh, the sector. Well, this is all I have uh, today. Thank you very much, Jason. Uh, thank you thank you melvin um before before we let you go here we're almost out of time in you know great presentation by the way and thank you very much for putting that together and as a jamaican myself I, i'd like to say thank you for helping us get our first greenhouse up and running um that's that's really exciting uh but quick question in from your presentation what i understand is there are challenges that need to be overcome in order for this technology to to be successful within this region um within this space do you believe that with appropriate investment from what you've seen on the ground can the you know the caribbean become you know almost like what the netherlands is is it is it feasible for us as a unit to work together and specialize in into different crops and but also work in a connected way do you see that that larger vision happening in the caribbean given the appropriate investment um, in technology in the human capital um, and in research and design, I think so. I think so. Uh, that there are there are opportunities for the sector in the Caribbean, and uh, you know, if you see the import bills for veg vegetables, and the and, and the region is huge, and 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 one of the in Jamaica right now, right now after a few years of investment and 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 do and research. Uh, uh, the bell peppers are all, the import bill for for bell peppers is almost uh, zero, and uh, and uh, also lettuce, let the the leaf leaf lettuce only the iceberg is imported, so there there are opportunities in the other countries, and and I think Jamaica is 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 is, a, is one example, but still I, I I I believe there is a lot of things to improve. Adapt more adaptation in terms of varieties, and the main the main issue is is to address high temperatures. High temperatures is the main limiting factor, this, and is and is the one that is cost you more. 
but the opportunities, yes, I believe so. Okay. Uh, uh, Jason, can I, ahead, can I yeah. jump in? Absolutely. Um, only because uh, the um, uh, some of the, uh, let's say, uh, important speakers in the morning stole some time from us. So I'm going to um, kind of bring in this to a little bit of a close. But I, I wanted to make a couple points. It's not just about Melvin um, uh, in his expertise. It's also about Jason um, uh, in his history, growing up as a farmer in Jamaica and being inspired by farming as a young kid and then finding his way to study and getting his college degree in farming to return to the Caribbean to do farming indoors and, and whichever is the right term in Puerto Rico to learn the business and then to go help in a few others that were getting started. Yeah, to I'll then migrate you. back to, to uh, the U.S. or come to the U.S. Uh, and be a lead farmer in a major operation in Brooklyn. But when I got to know Jason, I learned he was someone who wanted to return to Jamaica as a farmer in a new approach to farming that he saw was an opportunity for people in his country, um, even though he has this tremendous opportunity and had it in, in New York. Um, Melvin, the work you're doing in landscaping this, as, as we learn, there's something for everything. There's a large industrial players that are uh, maybe hurricane resistant and there's no one's got it right. There's a lot of learning, I'm sure, to do on that. But then there's the 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 shade houses in Guyana and and in in Jamaica and across the way. And then there's so many also mistakes that are being learned. These mistakes that are being learned are good things. Like in in uh, entrepreneurial world, you say failing up. We got to look at the people who are failing up in this industry. And uh, this is an opportunity for um, uh, investment and uh, those people in the crowd as investors who are looking to get in, a tr in front of a trend and maybe even create a vehicle could look at different technologies, different approaches. Um, the region of the Caribbean is a great testing ground for that. And um, Melvin, the work that you are doing to look at it from uh, across the board. And Jason, the interest you have as being an operator are the two things that will help drive this. So thank you. Thank you both. Um, we're going to cut it there. I know uh, there's been a couple people asking, Melvin, if we could share the deck with the, um, with the listeners. Um, uh, that's up to you to give that approval. Um, uh, there were people who wanted uh, to know if we could put the deck in the chat. That you that you went through, um, and so uh, you can let Heather know if if you're comfortable that um, people have access to it. Jason, thank you very much. Melvin, thank you very much. Much thank more you. to come in this area of interest. We appreciate it. On to our next event.